All right, folks, so we had way too much content from day two here at Blade Show 2022 to do just one video on day two. So we've got day two, part two of Blade Show 2022 coming up right now. What is happening, folks? I am here with the man, the myth, the legend, Anthony Marfione. What's Dude. happening? How are you guys doing? Doing good, man. Doing good. Having a good Blade show. It's been intense. It it's has been intense. It's been intense for sure. So you guys have got a really cool new design on this push dagger that is absolutely wicked. And uh, this thing is insane. So let's talk about that. That's that's the newest thing from you guys. Yeah, this, uh, this just came out a couple weeks prior to the show. Uh, this design was originally done by Steve Ryan. Uh, you know, it was, it's been a couple years in the making. It, this, this design is out of necessity of me just wanting one of his push daggers. You know, I eventually found one through him, and we kind of went to a place where it was like, hey, Steve, what can we do, or can I buy this design from you? And he's like, yeah, sure, why not? Let's do it. So I bought the design. He just so happened to have the sheath mold to go with it. And he gave me some other, you know, trinkets and stuff like that. To say, hey, here's some cool ideas to kind of do on your design. And I kind of just ran with it. So this is our interpretation of the Steve Ryan Surefire Push Dagger that, you know, we currently own. Right. So it's called the Slight. It's a modular knife system. So it, the base model will come on this simple rig like this, Blade Tech Lock. Blade tech, tech lock in an injection mold sheath. It was retained by this notch right here on the back side of the handle. So each one will come set up just like this. This will be the base model. You'll come, it'll come in DLC or stone wash in different colors. Currently we have black and green. Down the road we'll have blue and orange. Uh, the modularity comes from removing the blade on the push dagger handle with these uh, TH screws here. And your blade can come off and go right onto your knife handle accessory just like that and you just reattach the screw you re reattach it with the screws i'm only going to put one in just to kind of show so we don't waste a bunch of your guys video oh, you're good. video tape over there and that then, is and awesome it works all on the same rig that's freaking wicked so just like that and down the road we have a couple other handle designs we have a, a blade in the works that's going to have some serrations nice. that you can buy as accessories right so this is how it'll come just like this this setup and then you buy the handle accessory or blade accessory down the road or if you buy different colors and stuff you swip and swap you know all your stuff everybody absolutely. loves to play legos oh yeah absolutely so, modularity is key to everything we do yeah so I mean, he, he, taking cues from the AR-15, I mean, that's the, the right. grown man's Lego, and we're applying it to <laughs> knives now, and I think that's freaking awesome. Right. I mean, just fantastic. So when can we expect to see these hitting stores? They're already hitting stores. Nice. They, they went out two weeks ago. We got the DLC ones here at the show exclusively, and then we're going to be, this is one of the first models we've been actually making in-house, 100%. Nice. So we are, uh, we're pumping them. So. Heck yeah. That is awesome. Dude, thank you so much. Hey, we man. appreciate it. Thank you, guys. And folks, we also just picked up a whole bunch of new Heretic stuff. Absolutely. Um, and that's going to be hitting our shelves, hitting our website very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. Anthony, thank you again, brother. We appreciate it. Awesome. You guys keep rocking it out, man. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, folks, guys. Stay tuned for more from right here at Blade Show 2022. What is happening, everybody? Look at here. I got the man, the myth, the legend right here. Just for Vox Nation. Dude, thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Thank you for talking to us, and um, so we're here at the Giant Mouse booth, and uh, you work very closely with Giant Mouse on uh, some incredible designs, and this one right here is coming up. I, I dude, this one is uh, really catching my eye this year, and that's I, that is amazing. <laughs> so, what is this one called? It's called the Nibbler. The Nibbler. Yeah. Uh, it had a, a different name. It was called the uh, Nibbles. <laughs> wait, wait. So it was called the Nibbles because you remember Tom and Jerry, right? And uh, Jerry has a cousin from the country. Every, that's the small mouse, and he always gets there and uh, he eats everything Jerry has. So <laughs> we like that. But then we were at a dinner, and someone said, "Would you like to see my Nibbles?" 
And I was like, oh, that's not going to work. So we decided to change the name to the Nibbler. And the Nibbler is a small metal cutting tool. That is incredible. M390 on the blade steel. No, and this one is N690. N690? Yeah, so these are going to awesome. be sub 100. Yeah. You're and kidding me. They're going to be one. So 95 bucks, and we are also coming out with uh, this in Micarta and CV20, 20 CV, and we're gonna do a titanium version with uh, 20 CV as well. Oh my god! They're gonna be more pricey, but uh, right. The entry uh, model will be uh, about 95 bucks. Yeah. That is we incredible. Have some cool coming. Yeah. And so, be a green as well as the blue and the red. Yeah. When can we expect to see those? Uh, in a couple of months, they should be out. Hopefully in the beginning of August, but we'll see. Nice. Probably mid-August. Nice. Yeah. Absolutely awesome. So have you got anything else new that you got uh, in the works coming out? Well, we just released this one. Yeah. This is the NASCAR. And uh, it's the first time we play around with a crosslock. Um, this one came out in uh, green camas, micata, uh -huh. and titanium. This is the titanium version, of course, and uh, it's an M390 blade. It's just yes. really good action on these. That is beautiful right there. Oh, that's gorgeous. Fantastic. And super fidgety. To oh, yeah. Can't the wait. spring feels <laughs> so good yeah. too. Like yeah, it's it, it feels really well. Yeah. That spring is so solid. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that's absolutely beautiful. Now, what's the price point on this one here? So, a titanium version is uh, two eighty-five, and the canvas version is uh, two twenty-five. That's awesome. And those just came out, just released. Just, we released them Thursday, uh -huh. just before the show started. And uh, when are those going to be like shipping out to dealers? dealers? will have them in about a week, maybe. Nice. A week and a half. Yeah. That's awesome. That's incredible. Dude, thank you so much for talking to us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Folks, keep an eye out. We've got the Nibbler and we've got this one on the way. So keep an eye out for those. You're going to see them hitting our shelves and our website very soon. Jesper, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Folks, stay tuned for more from right here at Blade Show 2022. What is happening, everybody? I've got Brad from Bradford Knives. Dude, hey, thank, thank you, you so much. Uh, thank you for talking to us, and we absolutely love your product. Uh, we've been carrying it in the store now for a little over a year, year and a half, and uh, the stuff is amazing. Uh, fit and finish, quality, incredible. Um, and we got a lot to talk about here. Uh, first, I want to talk about, so one of my favorite EDCs that I've had for the last year has been the G Necker, um, or the Necker, and I got it because it was a fantastic deal. Like, as far as money goes, uh, best bang for your buck and size of an EDC fixed blade, as far as I'm concerned. It fits in the hand really nice, but you had a really cool story to tell about that and how that actually came about. That's awesome. Well, yeah, what happened with the, with the LMAX Necker is Fuller, the manufacturer of the LMAX, they had an excess amount uh, at a very thick stock and they just couldn't get rid of it. And they called me up and wanted us to actually grind it down for them. I suggested, hey, let's get a little better deal on the steel and let me design a knife suited around that thicker stock. Right. And so what we did is we integrated the handle uh, with that thicker stock. We really tried to make a handle using the thicker stock but because a, a knife with a real thick stock like that, a lot of times you lose the cutting, the edge geometry, we decided to make a grind suitable to our other Guardian series by bringing the spine of the knife in and therefore having a more realistic geometry on the cutting edge. So I think what you're gonna get is you're gonna get an awesome performance with the LMAX steel. It's, you really can't be beat. And then you're gonna get a thin slicing edge geometry that is just gonna make, you know, it's gonna make cutting way more fun. Absolutely, and I tell you what, it turned out great. But you said you. so; those are going to be kind of going away. There's, there's, you can't really get that kind of deal on it anymore. Yeah. So, with um, the, with everything we've seen in the industry as far as supply and COVID and all yeah. the supply chain stuff, uh, there's just not excess material available at super thick stock. Right. So, as far as what we see in the LMAX, we don't have any more material, um, and we're kind of looking around and putting our feelers out there, but. For right now, this is kind of, it is what it is. Nice. Yeah. 
So, so get, get it while you can. Get really. it while you can. Those are those are yeah. special. Yeah, um, those are special. Now we were talking to your wife earlier, mm -hmm. and she was saying how you kind of uh, well. First of all, you had somebody come by, and you were like, they said, uh, so you're the uh, the kitchen cutlery, the the, <laughs> the chef's cutlery place, right. and yeah, she was like, well. Yeah, but not really. Like that's not. And she she kind of explained the story about how you guys just kind of happened into that. So explain that a little bit. Kitchen cutlery has always been one of those things where we've wanted to kind of dabble. Uh, it's an interesting market to get into. It's really dependent on the steel. And we've always worked with super premium powdered metallurgy. Costs a lot to make a kitchen knife out of that kind of steel. We found AEBL, not really knowing what we had come into. It's a, it's a phenomenal stainless for the kitchen. Yes. Um, it's got excellent edge retention. Um, the price point is right. And it also is very easy to be sharpened. It does hold an edge for a long time. It's stainless. Uh, it's great. But it also is able to be sharpened and touched up on either a ceramic or a diamond yeah. rod out of, your out of your standard knife block. Right. Which is different than some of the super premium steels where you are going to have to bust out your wicked edge right. or bust out a fixed angled sharpener can be touched up really easily so we are loving the abl culinary yeah. this is a line that uh, we definitely see continuing for some time um, the abl steel is more readily available yeah. and as long as we can as long as we can, as long as customers are still enjoying that steel in their kitchen we're going to keep making them so yeah, and yeah. you know, it was funny, she was like, you know, we, we were into knife making and uh, she was like, I need you to make me something that, because I use knives more than you do in the kitchen, <laughs> so I want something nice, make me something. So I think that's, I think that's fantastic, because like uh, we were talking with her earlier, kitchen knives are actually the knives that you use more often than any other. Like, kitchen knives get used way more often than pocket knives or even EDC fixed blades. Like, yeah. Kitchen knives are really the ones we go to day in and day out, and we don't realize how much we use those. Yes. Um, so that's fantastic. So, and you've got the different uh, handle material options, just like you do on on all your other stuff with those. So you've got like, uh, and we got a blue G wood there. So cool looking. Yeah. We, I mean, the whole philosophy of our stuff is we want to make something really unique to your preferences. Right. So we do have a few different, you know, scale options. We have the blue G wood. We have the black G10. That's going to be more for like your traditional. Uh, kitchen knife block kind of meant to blend in but not too much right it's super thin I mean these knives are so thin they're absolute nightmares uh, for a tomato but really <laughs> really good if you're cutting the tomato um, we have the carbon fiber which is a little more premium and then the traditional G wood which we think just is a real nice classy look yeah. it's a thin layer of veneer uh, stabilized between layers of G10 and just has that real nice layered look as you machine absolutely, it absolutely yeah yeah so now Moving back into the EDC fixed blades, the yes. new hotness is going to be this G4S. The G4 sheep's foot is new this year. Um, it's an op it's not it's my favorite blade shape. I love the sheep's foot blade shape. There's something about the sheep's foot that always just sings to me. It's a, got a great balance on it. It's great for uh, cutting boxes, cutting envelopes, cutting cardboard. But particularly on the bigger sheep's foot, as Nicole likes to say, this is the uh, the survival by day. Uh, chef at night yes you know this has a really nice kitchen kind of uh, kind of kitchen slicer santoku feel oh absolutely and so I think around the campfire this is gonna be this is gonna be doing some great work that's making um, a great camp knife right there yeah so it's kind of a, a dual purpose it's gonna fit in our standard traditional vertical leather carry sheet nice. um, which makes it really nice it fits really nice and snug in there and uh, yeah it's been really popular here at the show and you've got it throughout the gamut of all of your handle options as well so you've got it in the in the g wood as well that's correct yeah so that's i mean super cool looking there the g wood the ghost 10 uh, that you just showed there yep. the ghost u10 we have a few different micarta options as well i really like micarta for outdoors I oh think, yeah i think micarta is fun because it kind of takes on the personality of how you're using it exactly so you can almost look at the micarta and it will tell a story of where it's been it can take your oils from your hand it kind of shows right shoot it through on the scales right it's really fun so we have four different options in my carta and then we get into the g10s that's super cool yeah brad thank you so much for joining us we appreciate it hey, you're very thank welcome. you for talking thank to you, us sir. and uh i mentioned earlier maybe we can get some uh some exclusives worked out so okay, let's see what we can talk. do yeah, absolutely <laughs> folks stay tuned for more for right here at blade show 2022 thank you what is happening, everybody? TC here with Smoky Mountain Knife Works, smkw.com. 
And I've got Andrew Demko. Andrew, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it, man. Uh, we love talking to you. Now, I tell you what, I talk you up to everybody I can because of your brilliant mind. You, I mean, you, and you've been doing this for quite a long time. Yeah. Um, so everyone knows your work from Cold Steel, uh, the Triad Lock, um, really getting that name out there. Your Shark Lock has been insanely popular over the last year. Um, I mean, anytime we get them in, we're sold out of them just like that in yeah. that 80-20.5. So uh, the work you're doing is fantastic. And I want to get a close-up shot of that Shark Lock right there, um, showing what's going on right there. It's incredibly simple. But at the same time, it's not. So uh, I gotta ask first before we get into everything else. How did you, how do you think about solving a problem like that? Well, honestly, all almost all locks are the same. They do the same thing. They typically wedge something between the the blade and a fixed point. So even if you think of a liner lock, there's a stock pin on top. The blade swings open, and the liner goes this way. Really, that liner is really just pushing that blade around the pivot up into the stop pin. Triad lock, we had the stop pin and the blade tang, and that wedge went in there and it essentially pushed. Axis lock, <laughs> axis liners, blade, it's always something wedging in there, almost everything is. Yeah. So in that sense, everything's really the same, it, basically. However, there's a lot of ways to, to, does your wedge come in horizontally? Is it dropping vertically? You know, is, is it swinging down? It's just there's some motion, Was it whether it comes literally or, or, or vertically or transversely, somehow there's something wedging going on. Right. Um, and that said, this is like, basically I thought of this when I was working on the, the ram safe lock for Colt Steel, which was like a duke duke, the old French duke duke. We, right. You turn that and you know, that folded thing, and we, we just ram that pin, that, that rod in there. And I thought, how can I do that without the folded steel frame? And that was it. So I ended up with the stop pin. And this had a lot of variations. I've been working on this for probably like 10 years off and on. I could never make it exactly how I wanted it until, until my machining capability and on my, my shop, I could actually um, get it made right when I go into wire DMing and stuff. You right. know? So I, I started on this and I, I couldn't get it to work exactly right. I went to the even simpler, the 8015, the scorpion right. lock. That was easier to do. And then, I, I, you know, my capabilities increased, and hopefully my, my line of thinking. <laughs> and I came back to this, and then that just fell together. So it solves, every time I do a locking mechanism, there's always one thing, oh, this is a pain in the butt. I gotta somehow work around this, you know? One of the, one of the things was with, this, with the triad lock was the leaf spring. Mm -hmm. Leaf springs, the best leaf springs, they still have a couple pounds of a difference when you're pressing them. Right. Coil springs, or compression coil springs, they're, they're much more accurate in mm -hmm. my in my uh, estimation and, and what we've done. So they're so much more consistent. Yeah, yeah. very consistent. So and I just you know I solve I solve a problem a production problem for me with everything with every new variation. So yeah. eventually these are going to be really good. <laughs> <laughs> eventually they are already there and those things are awesome. Now now we go from the lock genius as I as I call you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, to a fixed blade. How did that? Uh, how did this one come about? Well, I love I love mechanisms, but I also I mean I just love knives and fixed blades. And I spend most of my time when I'm not trying to, you know, work on a lock, making fixed blades. I usually don't finish anything, but I make them work, <laughs> and I just go outside and I chop stuff, and I cut stuff. I you know I just just like a kid, just like right. I did when I was in high school. Oh yeah, walking around cutting stuff. So um, I wanted to bring out a fixed blade, and this actually. This is actually the 8015 in, in every way with the handle. It's the 8015 oh, yeah. handle. 8015 style, narrow, long, narrow drop point, just a little longer. And I really wanted to bring out, because as you know, I was on my own, I didn't want to carry around someone else's fixed blade. So right. Well, I might as well make a good fixed blade. You know, at this, this, this level, like I could do like a fancy one leather sheath, but I want, you know, that $150 retail right. knife. So I started working on this. And I address some of the problems with the fixed blades are the sheets. Right. Um, the the glass full nylon is the typical sheet material that emulates Tidex. Right. That dulls the crap out of your knife instantly. Yeah. So at Cold Steel, we used to be like, 
hey, let's get rid of that nylon in it. Well, then the sheets are too soft. Yeah. And you can get it with a small sheet, but the bigger ones would warp, and uh, they, they just didn't have the stiffness. So I, just, I thought, well, how can I solve that problem? So I ended up making this sheet. The frames are classical nylon for strength and stiffness, but then the panels are just flat nylon, so they do not dull your knife. You know, if you take if you take your classical nylon with your knife and go like this one, two, that thing will not stay there because it's got fiberglass right. in it. Exactly. Okay. So this, like Kydex, this nylon does not do that, but the glass filled frame gives a great stiffness. Right. Also, you'll know if you go outdoors with your knife, if you get anything in that knife in the sheath, you're you're ruined for life. Exactly. And every time that knife goes in that sheath, it's like. Like oh yeah, thinking out, yes. So I made sure to make this to where not only did it have this 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 you know two material system, but also you could take it apart. So you can take this frame off, this frame off, you can clean your knife, and you can change your colors out. We're gonna have different colors. Because people ask me, well what is this knife? Is it a military knife? I say yes, maybe, maybe if you go like this. Yeah. But maybe if you go like this, you're a kayak. Oh right? yeah. Because the knife, the, the, the five inch knife is capable of so many things, but what's the difference if it's, I mean, it's the blade, you know, yeah. it should be able to do everything, but it's everything in the world, whether you're in the military or you're a camper or you're a sportsman, you know, it can do it all. So almost, it's, it's almost the, the, the look of it or the, the, the paint job on it. Right. It determines what it is. It's like an army guy, like a, a special forces guy. Well, he's in a suit. <laughs> He's still badass, <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. So that's kind of that's kind of my theory here. It's, the knife blade should be it's, universal and good, uh -huh. and then it can look like what you think it should look like with the color scheme. Right. And so we were talking. You're coming out with two different tiers of these. Yes. Um, so you've got an import version that's going to be around. We're hoping to hit a retail of 150. We're producing it in 10A AUS 10A. Um, yeah. And we will also be producing it in D2. It'll be uh, K110 D2. Okay. And eventually I'm yeah. going to bring out a carbon steel, I hope, as yeah. well, for the fans of some straight, some good carbon steel. I'm working on uh, my suppliers in Taiwan. We're, we're, we brought in different materials. Um, and we'll see how that goes. You know, it's all about supply. Right. Yeah. And in house, we'll be making it at a Magna Cup. We're producing that right now. So we're going to, you know, the handle, the sheets and handles are all the same. Right. We're importing the handles, and then in, in my shop, we're cutting the blades. We'll have the blades ground, machine, all that. So we'll stick our American made blades in, sell you this for 250 at a Magna Cup. Wow. If that's not your price point, yeah, no, I'll say this is a D2 or 10A for 150. Nice. So we can we can hit all levels, or you know all what price points and material desires. Hopefully, absolutely. Now, what is the time frame as to when we can expect to see these? We'll have 10A landed uh, before Christmas. Nice. Our first run. Now our in-house production, we've already cut the blades, and they're going to heat treat two weeks after we get back. So then it's up to, so they'll, they'll still take a while, maybe three months plus, right. at least before we get it. But there, I mean, it's yeah, it's far into production. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's, we're, we're, we're past the halfway point of the week. Absolutely. Andrew, thank you so much for talking thank to you. us. We appreciate it. Folks, keep an eye out. You're going to see these hitting store shelves very soon before the end of the year. All right, so keep an eye out for those. You're definitely going to want to see that. Andrew, thank you again. Thank you. Folks, stay tuned for more from right here at Blade yeah, Show 2022. Really cool. What is happening, everybody? TC here with Smoky Mountain Knife Works, smkw.com. And today, I've got Matt here from White River Knives. Dude, thank you so much for having us, first of all. Thank you for talking to us. We appreciate Absolutely. it. And uh, we absolutely love the product you guys are putting out. Thank you. I mean, incredible quality um, and great designs. And you guys work with some great designers, too. Yeah. So your brand new hotness right here is your FCPKO. Right. And that one, as soon as we got the Blade Show yesterday, I walked by the booth and stopped me in my tracks. I was like, nope, I've got to touch that. I need to touch it. So let's talk about this knife and uh, what you guys got going on here. Yeah. So this is brand new. We're just releasing it here at the Blade Show. This is going to be available at Smoky Mountain Knife Works very soon. What is happening, everybody? TC here with Smoky Mountain Knife Works, smkw.com, and I've tracked down Adam Heibel. Adam, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. 
So uh, this is the face behind the incredible quality that is your knives. And I tell you what, your custom knives are outrageous. They're insanely beautiful. Thank you. So let's talk about and go into a little bit of what goes, uh, goes into making these. Um, the detail work, the fit and finish. I mean, they're insane, but you not only make your nice custom valleys, but you've also got trainers as well. Yeah, trainers are new this year. Um, so my my model for this year is called the Menace, and I'm sure you've seen them around. You had some at your store. Yep. Um, but I wanted to for a short time, and then they they sold. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, yeah, you might get more this weekend. Um, but I wanted to make a trainer version of it because last year I had a lot of people ask me for trainers, and I had to turn them away. So this year I'm happy to to have some trainers at the show for people to try out and flip safely. Yep. Um, you know, and just like a lighter, safer variant. Um, obviously. You know, once you get used to the Menace Trainer, you can step it up to the Live Blade. Right. And a little heavier, but I've also gotten some feedback on them. The, the Titanium Live Blade versions are balanced better, um, but they, they do they do prepare you for that. Um, now, are we going to be uh, able to see these in retail stores as well, the trainers? Possibly. <clears throat> okay. Possibly. You know, I got uh, quite a bit here at the show. I, I brought a lot. Yeah. So depends if I have some left over at the show but there are some improvements I want to make to them on the next version um, and it, so. uh, your hand looked like earlier you you wish you would have been using a trainer yeah at some point yeah no <laughs> there's a reason I make knives instead of flip them <laughs> that's hilarious uh, yeah. I'm sorry I had to I had to give you crap about that no, that's fantastic okay. but first first cut of the weekend though, so I'm not there you go too hey bad. that's not bad that is not bad when you're a valley guy, that is not bad. Right. So, let me ask you this. It's hard to find any knife maker, regardless of whether it's a balisong or a fixed blade or a tactical folder, that is making them with a CNC hollow grind. Yeah. So, that takes, one, a lot of patience and a lot of programming. Yeah. Go into how you decided and, and why you decided to go that route. With the hollow grind versus yeah. the flat grind? <clears throat> I personally like the look of a hollow grind, especially if you you know have a compound, so you got a flat tip. Obviously, I machined the uh, the flat grind at the tip. Right. But I like the way the hollow grinds look in the light, especially the hand ground version. Oh yeah. So like <clears throat> like this one, for example, I, I just like the way the light reflects off of it, and it gives I, it that jeweled appearance. Yeah, yeah. I have a wheel, and so. I sometimes take the uh, the milled versions and I, I just re-grind it and I don't know I just I, I like grinding hollow grinds better it's just easier for yeah. me and I think it looks cooler um, yeah so well I tell you what and also and this is something that um, Corbin and I talked about um, when he was in our store a couple weeks ago and we talked about your anodization yeah on your titanium scales and how much how much detail goes into and how much work goes into getting those smooth transitions on the anodizing for those those titanium scales it's it's a lot of work it's definitely a science you got to understand you know uh, electricity and how the process works uh, I watched your video that you did on it and you were right you got to pull it out at a mm -hmm. certain rate and you got to do them together so yep. that they're consistent. You can't do them separately if you want if you're doing a fade. Otherwise, I do all my other handles separately. Right. But even then, it's a game of you put it in there too long. You know, you got to you etch it a certain it. time. Yeah. You got to rinse it, and then you got to you got to anodize it for a certain period of time. Because I basically watch the voltage scale and the, and the amperage. Right. And I kind of time it based on the current and the voltage to get the same colors. Yeah. And a lot of people don't realize how much, uh, like, how much actually goes into it. You can't just stick it in a paint booth and <laughs> right. go to town. Like, it, that's not the way it works. It's, there's a lot of detail that goes into it. You've got to have your electrolytic solution just right. Yep. You've got to have the amperage just right, and your timing's got to be impeccable. And it, I'll tell you what, your attention to detail is second to none, and uh, that's why I think you're putting out some of the best work out there. It's so. important to me. Absolutely. I, I have an eye for detail. It, it's hard to let imperfections go by. So, 
you know, there's a balance there to hit the, you know, quality and price. But I, I try to meet in the middle. That's another thing that uh, Corbin said. Again. He said you've got a nice uh, pile of uh, discards scrap. there, scrap yeah. that you said. Um, and he's like, I can't see <laughs> the imperfections in this. I, I but yeah. that's also why people trust your product because they know they're getting something really good quality. Yeah. And uh, that really means a lot in this business. Adam, thank you so much for talking to us. You're we welcome. appreciate thank it. Thank you. And uh, folks, stay tuned for more from right here at Blade Show 2022. What is happening, everybody? TC here with Smoky Mountain Knife Works, SMKW.com. Yeah, and I'm joined by Ben yeah, from Jack Wolf Knives. Uh, ben, dude, your stuff is taking the internet by storm. And I mean, we got it in hand. I, I had heard a lot of hype about it, and we got it in hand, and I was like, it's all real. It's all real. So I tell you what is inspiring to me is I love your story about how you got into knives. Can you talk about that for a second? Absolutely. So I named the company after my grandfather. His name was Jack Wolf Belkin. And when I was a little boy, I was fascinated with his pocket knife. He was a role model for me. He used to take me fishing. He used to take me around. And I always wanted to be like him. So any chance I had, I'd take his pocket knife, stick it in my pocket, and feel like the king of the world. That is awesome. I mean, you, you don't get much more of a feel-good story than that. So, fast forward, how did you get into actually designing knives and uh, building your own brand? Well, I've got about 13 years of entrepreneurial experience. I've been a knife collector my whole life. Fell in love with slip joints and never looked back. When I was in high school in the Detroit area, I learned AutoCAD and technical drafting. So on my 40th birthday, I was trying to figure out what to do with the next 40 years of my life thought about the pieces of the puzzle that I had, and saw this vision, and there was no turning back. That's really cool. So you've already come out with the sharpshooter, the laid-back jack, and uh, we've seen the little bro down here. Yep. So you've got some more coming up, I'm assuming. That's right. Little bros are going to hit the shelves June 17th. Here at the Table 16C at the show, we've got a few left for sale. We're coming out with new knives on a monthly basis we're more or less rolling through the catalog one model at a time on a monthly basis and so these are all now let me clarify this these are all limited runs basically correct so once you're done once they're sold out of a specific model that one's not you're not making more of that one. so we'll once we cycle through the catalog we'll come back around yeah but it could be a year or more before we remake a specific model. Right. And my plan is to change something about that knife the second time I make it. So that each production run isn't it's in some way unique. Right. We're also going to change the artwork on the packaging with each production run. So if you buy production run number one of the Sharpshooter, for example, you're the only one with this can. You're the only one with this specific configuration. Now, that's another thing that we talked about when I talked to you yesterday is the total package so you've got your you've got your can you've got your cleaning cloth which is a really nice material one of the best in the business as far as I'm concerned really nice knife slip and you've got the pog got the pog so you and I are about the same age we're really close we remember that that era in the 90s when those were super popular they were huge and um, I mean you've got your slammer here yep. at blade show really really cool slammer right there i dig the the retro i mean and that's what you've done with the knives themselves so exactly. you've made the entire package retro but modern at the same time right and i think that's what everybody's loving i mean i think so too and you know what it's fun yeah absolutely well dude we are super excited to see everything coming up and uh keep on rocking it out i appreciate you guys thank you Stay tuned, folks. You're going to see more from Jack Wolf Knives, and we're really excited to bring it to you. And stay tuned for more from right here at Blade Show 2022. What is happening, everybody? TC here with Smoky Mountain Knife Works, smkw.com, and I've got Jason Brown here with us. And Jason, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, man, I'm glad to be here. Are you having a good time? I'm having a great time. Just there we go. can't figure out where to start. <laughs> so, uh, folks, this is one of our favorite things coming to Blade Show is getting to see the people that we live in the comment section with all the time. I mean, that's what really means a lot to us. It's the sense of community. And we were just talking to JB with Big Red EDC mm -hmm. about how much the community means and uh, what the community support really means to us. And it's guys like you, guys like JB, guys like Knives Fast KC. Um, it's all you guys that really make it possible for us and really mean so much to us. So 
from us to you. Thank you, brother. Well, I appreciate, appreciate it. it. I mean, you guys helped me through my day today too, more than you realize. That's what we're here for, and uh, we want you to know that. So, Jason, thank you so much, and folks, sure. stay tuned for more from right here at Blade Show 2022. Jason, have a good time, brother. Yes, what is happening, everybody? TC here with Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, SMKW.com, and I'm here with the man RMJ himself. Ryan, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, appreciate it's it. My pleasure. Absolutely. So. Um, you are the uh, originator of the company RMJ. Right, founder and of the company. So, how did you get into knives? Really? So, I was the kid that was running through the woods, uh, you know, at nine years old with a machete strapped to my back, you know, playing ninja and stuff like that, and did all my book reports on weapons and stuff, and so I loved weapons as a kid. Absolutely. And knives, and uh, my parents were kind enough to let me use hatchets and knives and throw in tomahawks when I was young. Um, my parents met through amateur archaeology, so I grew up with a lot of going on digs and stuff yeah. and seeing a lot of Indian uh, artifacts in our house. Um, when I was 11, I got very interested. My dad brought me home two books, uh, Swords and Blades of the American Revolution, which has a whole chapter on tomahawks, and a, a book called The Ben Hunt's Guide to Indian Craft, which was a book published in the 30s uh, all about how to make you know, how to make rawhide and right. how to make snowshoes and stuff like that. And so those two books were very formative for me as far as like, I, it made me, I kept looking at those tomahawks and looking at those tomahawks. And um, I was at my grandparents during the summer and they had a painting of a blacksmith shop uh, in their house. And I, I was looking at that blacksmith and I just had that epiphany of, if, if I had a blacksmith shop, I could make all the tomahawks I wanted, all the <laughs> weapons I wanted. And, and so uh, when I went home, I started gathering books on the subject and going to flea markets and picking up tools. And that was, I was uh, 12 at wow. that point. And so by age 13, I had blacksmithing equipment and was forging. Nice. Well, you've got some really cool uh, new examples right here that you guys have come out with. And these things are super slick. First off, I gotta say, I love your designs. I love how durable they are for how lightweight they are. Right. Like most of your stuff is super lightweight right. uh, compared to what it looks like it would be. So everything we make at RMJ USA, we model in 3D. So everything starts out. Everything starts out typically as a sketch on the back of a kids menu. <laughs> you know? But then we uh, we'll take that over to SolidWorks and and model it 3D. Right. And one thing that allows us to do is to uh, look at the balance point on everything. Uh, it allows us to look at the center of gravity. It allows us to uh, maximize uh, the strength while also reducing weight. Yeah. You know, because people have to carry this stuff. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. Our, our initial design goal is is almost always, you know, boots on the ground. People are toting this on a on a, a ballistic vest or or putting it uh, with their with their kit. And so, if you can't carry it, you can't use it. Absolutely. So, uh, what what are these that you got here? So we've got two that are uh, popular pieces for us. This is the Raider Dagger. Um, this one is uh, CPM-3V. And our Raider Dagger was something that we worked with uh, MARSOC, Marine Special Operations yeah. Command, uh, to make. Uh, you know, the Marine Raider Dagger became famous during World War II um, as a, a symbol they still use today, yeah. the Raider Dagger. And for me, when they came to me and said, hey, we want an RMJ version of the Raider Dagger, the original Raider Dagger uh, was not full tang and it had a much uh, a more delicate blade. And so what you end up seeing from the old World War II versions was them breaking uh, there at the, at the guard. Right. And you see a lot of broken tips on them. And so one of the concerns from the Marsoc guys was they're, they're just too big. Yeah. You know, they're just too big to carry in a modern battle space. Right. So what we did was we made the Raider Dagger more compact, made it full tang, and, and made it strictly a, a stabbing machine, you know, because the name of the game with the dagger, really with any kind of hand-to-hand -hand combat with a bladed right. weapon is, is penetration. Right. Exactly. That's really cool. Yeah, we like it. We like it. And so what's the coating on the blade? Um, we use a, a Cerakote. It's right. a ceramic gun finish. Mm -hmm. Um, we did salt spray tests with a lot of different finishes from parkerizing to Duracoat, Cerakote, uh, DLC. And as far as durability and salt spray tests, we like the Cerakote. Nice. 
And you've got a, another Wicked Blade right here, too. So, uh, ironically enough, this was also a Marsoc uh, piece that we worked with. This is our UCAP, uh, which stands for Up Close and Personal. And the idea was to make a knife that could be carried in the waistband. Um, and so that's why it has actually such a small handle. It's for the size of the knife, it's got a lot of blade. Yeah. And, it, and, and people ask, they say, well, you know, the handle is just big enough. I'm like, right, because when you are carrying a knife um, concealed, uh, the handle is the hardest part to conceal, right? The blade yep. is easy to yep. tuck just away. Just like with a gun. I mean, right. same thing. Just yeah. like with a gun. So we tried to minimize the handle as much as possible so you could, could carry it concealed. Um, and we, you know, so this is a, a great knife to tuck away. It's got a lot of blade, uh, but it's also something, it's not just a, a defensive weapon. It's also just a great all-around EDC knife. Yeah, absolutely. That is super cool. Ryan, love your work and love everything you do. Thanks, sir. I appreciate it. And everything it. that you do for the knife community. We appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate you guys. And uh, we're going to be making it down to your facility soon. Sounds good. We'll have some barbecue. There we go. Folks, stay tuned for more from right here at Blade Show 2022. What is happening, everybody? TC here with Smoky Mountain Knife Works, SMKW.com, and I've got Justin Gingrich from Gingrich Tactical Innovations. Dude, Good absolutely season. love yeah, your stuff, and it's nice to finally meet you. Um, I tell you what, I've been fawning over your stuff and uh, love your story. It's a very inspirational, and uh, anything we can do with our veterans, I think, is amazing. And um, your work definitely shows your attention to detail and uh, your I'm not a knife designer. I've made a couple of designs myself, but getting into the mind of a, of a designer and hearing where the inspiration comes from is one of the coolest things for me working in this business. And you've got some really cool new stuff coming out, and we'd really like to talk about that stuff. Sure. So you've got some new ones right here. Uh, look like a couple of pig stickers right there. It is. So um, for those of your viewers and the guys that you know that are familiar with a lot of hunting TV, Kip Copperell. Kip Copwell, Copwell, I know I'm butchering his name and I'm sorry, uh, has Red Arrow Weapons, Red Arrow TV. Mm -hmm. uh, good friend of mine put us in touch and he needs, he wanted a hog hunting knife and a belt knife. So I was like, no problem. So we're testing this one out this year, it's brand new. Uh, so for the hog knife, we did this one, seven and a half inch blade, real sleek handle, almost like an old school bayonet. Yeah. Because you don't really need to do a whole lot other than stab it. Right. Still done in um, quarter inch thick, 80 CRV2. So you can really beat on that knife if you want yeah. to. No issues with it. Um, Look at how thick that blade stock is. I mean, that's insane. And out of 80 CRV2, we, so we do a blade steel series. Mm -hmm. We did 80 CRV2 a while back and the durability on a knife like this is just insane. Yeah, you should have no issues. And you guys already know everything I do has a lifetime warranty on it too. I make sure to overbuild them a little bit so you guys can really get out there and get the full benefit and abuse them and use them. Uh, so to, for his belt knife that he wanted to do, I basically took the same knife and just decided to shrink it. That's so cool. So we did it just smaller. Uh, it's 316. Uh, I did it 530 seconds this time. It's 1095 for the blade steel. We're probably going to change that. It'll go to a stainless just because it's a smaller. It's going to be right. worn close to the body, a lot more sweat, a little less maintenance on it. Uh, but we're in the process of testing that that design out right now. That is fantastic, and you've you've got that in the burl wood as well, Correct. which yep. is gorgeous. Thank you. I've had a lot of comments on that particular burl. Uh, it's stabilized maple burl, just in a black, but a lot of people seem to like it. So yeah. we may stick with that as an option too. Absolutely, and super lightweight for what you would think that would be a lot heftier than it is, um, but not at all. That's super light. Thank you. Gorgeous. You've also, you were mentioning you got back into doing some throwing stuff. Yeah, so um, again, you guys have done my story, so you, most guys know that I was originally with American Tomahawk Company and it had Ranger knives. So I've been in the throwing sports for two decades now, for 20 years. Kind of got away from it a little bit, uh, but this year I've been kind of prompted to get back into it. So yeah. starting to do a couple of different designs with the custom. Uh, throwers that are competition size and weight so they spin the same as a tomahawk nice. so we'll see how they do this year and i'll make some revisions to that and we'll 
we'll start see you guys will start seeing a lot more of the throwing sport stuff throwers for nice. tomahawks and uh, the knives again this coming Absolutely. in the next couple of years yeah now this one right here i fell in love with immediately this was the first one i picked up when i came over to see you and uh this is what everybody is looking for right now they're looking for that do-it-all camp knife and i love the way you explained the design on this knife so this one is my bush chef's knife so for your guys you can see it everywhere from about the plunge line this way is of course your chef's knife and everything from the plunge line back is bushcraft so it's that one be all end all food prep wood chopping you name it camp task knife it's done in aebl stainless steel full flat grind g10 liners micarta handles so it's virtually maintenance free wash it down wipe it down and you'll be fine you'll be good to go Absolutely. Um, uh, white river and i are talking about it they may pick this up as part of the gti gti line with them so you may see that come out with with white river here in the next year that is freaking cool so that that actually leads me to my next question so hopefully within the next year on that one yep right now it's a custom build so anybody that wants one by all means they can contact me and we can do that uh, but for production you'll probably see it come from white river here before too long. awesome and what about the throwing knives contact me directly Absolutely. and we can do any modifications you guys want if they want them weighted forward or back we can change the weight by how i do the grinds or how i many uh lightning holes i do in the in the handle so nice now the pig stickers and the and the personal knives here they're all custom built all right customs. now so we can do that uh when i get feedback from kip he's doing some of course filming and using them in the field and see what he likes what he doesn't like there may be some changes to it there may not so but any changes will be fairly minor maybe a little bit contour in the handle different maybe material change but i don't really foresee him changing a whole lot with it right now awesome justin thank you so much brother thank you guys appreciate, appreciate it you. and folks definitely check now where can they find your stuff how can they get out get in touch with you so website is gingrichtactical.com facebook instagram it's gingrich tactical super easy to find the phone number that is on the card the website uh all the social media it rings to this phone right here nice so it, if, if they call they're going to get me absolutely folks check it out gingrich tactical you heard it and you saw it right here and folks stay tuned for more from right here at blade show 2022